When out exploring in the wilderness, sometimes you just can't shake the feeling that maybe you're being watched. Perhaps your getaway away from the noise of urban life isn't as lonely as you were hoping. Perhaps something's out there. Maybe it's a deer, or a bear, or a me. Or maybe you'll catch sight of something unexplainable. In today's video, we're going to be exploring what is widely regarded to be the original Grand Theft Auto myth, one that's as fascinating in the games as it is in real life. And that, of course, is the legend of Bigfoot. So the first question to answer is, what is Bigfoot? Bigfoot, also known as a Sasquatch, also known as the Yeti, the Abominable Snowman, and if you really can't be bothered, Dave, is a mythical primate alleged to exist in the forests of North America, and by extension the world. Especially in North American culture, Bigfoot has become something of an icon. And yet, this massive ape-like man of the woods still evades classification, meaning Bigfoot here is referred to as a cryptid. There have been many alleged sightings of Bigfoot, along with alleged hair samples and inconclusive DNA results, although often they wind up being from entirely different animals. There has also been video footage supposedly displaying Bigfoot, stories of attacks on people, and the general consensus is the vast majority of these anecdotes are hoaxes. I mean, I looked up a Bigfoot sightings map and apparently somebody saw one in Reading. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. And yet, despite the logic that were there a species of eight-foot-tall ape-like men in the woods around roads often travelled by humans with a sustainable population, we probably would have conclusively found them by now, even if they were experts at staying hidden. The legend of the Sasquatch lives on, and appears to have extended into the Grand Theft Auto games. The myth of Bigfoot in the Grand Theft Auto series dates back to GTA San Andreas, published in 2004 to masses of controversy courtesy of the Hot Coffee mod. Meanwhile, on archaic video game forums, which are arguably more civilised than the internet we occupy today, stories began to surface documenting a creature that inhabits the forests of San Andreas, and this prompted many players to comb through the woods in the game, in hopes of just catching a glimpse of what was believed to be Bigfoot. There have only ever been vague images and descriptions of the creature, though attempts to find textures, models and assets that would confirm the existence of Bigfoot in the game have turned up fruitless, and any images appear to be the handiwork of mods. Nonetheless, the debate as to whether or not Bigfoot exists in GTA San Andreas continues, However, in an interview with Rockstar Games co-founder and managing director Terry Donovan in 2005, he weighed in by saying, There is no Bigfoot, just like in real life. Players enamoured with the theory of Bigfoot's presence in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas would also retroactively go back and apply their theories to GTA Vice City, and before that GTA 3. And though in Vice City there appears to be a film poster depicting an ape man titled The Hairy Beast from Hell, there's precious little else to indicate the presence of the Sasquatch. As for GTA 3, the evidence is scarcer again. Though players have reported sighting Bigfoot in the game, there's no real evidence to give these claims credibility. I think it's safe to say as far as the 3D universe is concerned, there is no Bigfoot. But that doesn't mean that in wake of players clearly wanting there to be a Bigfoot, Rockstar wouldn't toy with the idea. In 2010, Rockstar Games would release Red Dead Redemption, and later that year we'd receive Undead Nightmare to go with it. And it's in Undead Nightmare that for the first time, Rockstar Games would let us come face to face with the Sasquatch. Uh, uh, I got one, mister! Hey! I got one! Got what, mister? The damn Sasquatch! The filthy thing was gonna eat my dog when this girl hollered out, and I shot the thing right through the heart! Oh, I can't. You feeling alright, mister? I've seen a lot of strange things recently, but no Sasquatch running around here, nor no place else. They, they're made up. There's Sasquatches every place, cowboy. They're nastier than your mother-in-law with a bad case of that virus. Down in Manzanita Post, they ate a little girl. Are you serious? Do I look like I'm joking? The hills are infested with them. Kill them. Kill the bastards before they kill all of us. Kill him! 
Kill them! In this apocalyptic Red Dead Redemption parody, we're quite literally tasked with wiping the Sasquatches off the face of the earth, and upon killing a few, we come face to face with the last one. Shoot me, human! Shoot me! Oh, I will, you foul creature of the night. You'll be granting me peace. Why's that? Keep you from eating more babies? In the name of all the traits, are you talking about, human? You eat babies. You have to to survive. Everyone knows that. Ain't your fault. We eat berries and mushrooms, you fool. But we did. Now none of us are left. Some maniac's been murdering us. I'm the last of my kind. We've lived in these hills a thousand years. You eat babies. If you say so, human. My family is gone. My kind is gone. I can't take it anymore. Make it stop. <laughs> now, these events aren't canon to the GTA universe, of which there are many anyway, but the achievement slash trophy slash whatever we get for completing this mission in Undead Nightmare is six years in the making. Six years is the time difference between the release of San Andreas in 2004 and the release of Red Dead Redemption in 2010. And the French variant of this achievement translates to no need to seek any more CJ. Now this undead nightmare encounter is made relevant by the commentary it makes. Rockstar put you as the player in a position where you have to kill these Sasquatches out of fear that they eat babies and puppies and then deal with the moral feeling that they were sentient and peaceful beings after all to show the player what they would have done if they found a Sasquatch in the Grand Theft Auto games. No matter how interesting it is when you look for it, the end result is the same, you just shoot it. But fortunately for us, Rockstar weren't quite done hitting home their points. And if it's any consolation, I'd personally Molotov the last Sasquatch. Grand Theft Auto V sees us return to the state of San Andreas where this legend began a whole nine years prior to this game's launch, and GTA players didn't seem ready to give up on the notion of Bigfoot being somewhere out there in the wilderness. And well, he appears to be on the city of Los Santos Crest, which can be seen on many administration buildings around the city. The beast appears in the bottom right hand corner of the city seal, which if nothing else is vindication of the popular San Andreas myth. Finally, could there be some meat to this legend? Yes, but will it be the answers we're hoping for? Let's find out. In the main story mission Predator, Franklin, Michael and Trevor are hunting down the O'Neills as they try to escape on foot in Rattan Canyon. Franklin and Chop are on the ground whereas Trevor is flying a helicopter and Michael is operating a sniper rifle. This sniper fortunately comes equipped with thermal vision and in the bottom right hand side of your available point of view, we can see a strange figure glowing from the trees before quickly vanishing. The man is of a peculiar stocky build and due to its irrelevance to the rest of what's going on, it is believed this is Bigfoot and a cheeky view without the thermal scope reveals the man appears to be clad in fur. It's also interesting that without moving, this creature can disappear from thermal vision. So it's an easter egg of sorts, we're getting somewhere. But before we move on to anything more substantial, let's look at some of the more small details. For example, in the game there is a clothing brand called Yeti. Supposedly there's also some Bigfoot memorabilia found inside Lester Crest's house as well. But all I could find was this magazine with a bottom line that read Bigfoot, Big Lie or Government Super Soldier along with a bucket load of other conspiracy theorist crap. And that's really it. For the most part, it would seem as if the game forgets about Bigfoot, but that's not actually the case. You see, upon acquiring 100% completion, you unlock the final Strangers and Freaks mission known as The Last One. 
in which we encounter a hunter not dissimilar in appearance to the one we see in Undead Nightmare, up in Rattan Canyon in the Chiliad Mountain State Wilderness, where we saw what looked like Bigfoot in the Predator main story mission, on the trail of some strange prey. You lucky boy. You real lucky. Why? I thought you was a squatch. I nearly pulled a bullet in you. Made my goddamn fortune. A what? A Sasquatch. Man, you believe in that bullshit? I spent eight years combing these woods. I've seen one. Hundreds of times. I just never got a clear shot. Here, look at this. It's fresh sketch. Man, you just gonna carry that shit loose in your pocket like that? Always. Hold on. Damn! I could have sworn! They're clever bastards! Some of them wear orange so that people will think they're hunters! Let's go this way! Sasquatches, huh? A pitcher would be good! A stuffed head, even better! Scat sight's down there in the valley there. I'm gonna cover these cliffs. Been hunting that beast longer than you'll ever know, boy! Finally, this seems like it could lead somewhere. The hunter, though clearly nuts, indicated by the fact he shot a random guy, appears to have been combing these woods for almost as long as the time between the release of GTA San Andreas and GTA 5, in hopes of hunting and killing the Sasquatch. You just keep an ear out for them terrible howls. When I hear them, I know either you found them or he's found you. So after some words of encouragement, we have a search area to get to, and sure enough, when we arrive within it, what the hell was that? It would appear as if there is a Sasquatch mooching about. Weird ass creature. Damn, where'd he go? So close. How did that miss? This motherfucker run like a homie. Franklin realizes this Sasquatch appears to be running like a man, and after a bit of cat and mouse and firearms, Get down, boy! Got you! How the fuck did that not put him down? Damn, he's still going? Missed! We eventually come face to face with our elusive prey. Shoot me, human! I just did! Shoot me, human! Make it stop! I just shot your ass and stop! I'm the last of my kind! Yeah, evolution is a bit. We've lived in these woods a thousand years. Man, wait a second. It's just a fucking mask. Make it stop, human. Man, shut the fuck up with that bullshit. What the fuck is wrong with you running around the woods in a costume? I'm the last of my kind. Man, you fucking freak. Hey, I'm no freak. It's perfectly normal to admit to being aroused role-playing dressed as a fantastical beast. What the fuck was that? What do you want it to be? Man, go fuck yourself, man. So this time around, the Sasquatch appears to have been just a bloke in a suit. It's a bit of an anticlimax, if ever there was one. But I do find it interesting that this character appears to be reciting similar things to what the Sasquatch in Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare was saying. It was just mocking that, and in the same vein, we shot Bigfoot, proving the point that that's all that would ever happen if we found him. And the bloke who admits to being aroused by dressing up as a fantastical beast could very well explain the Easter egg from the Predator mission as well. So once again, the actual, real Bigfoot appears to not be present in Grand Theft Auto. Rather, it's just a really strange man who can mimic animal noises and appears to be somewhat bulletproof. Interesting within itself, but not quite what we were hoping for. However, there's more. You may be familiar with the peyote plants dotted around the map. You find them and consume them without questioning what it was you put in your body, and they get you high, and the next thing you know, you're an animal. Ooh! I wanna be! And then when you've had your fun, you can simply leave. At which point you may or may not fall through the world. No risk, no reward though. There are 27 of these collectibles and they transform you into all kinds of creatures. But provided you've done all those and reach 100% in game completion, 
you can then go and find seven more. They can be found in different locations on different in-game days between the hours of 5.30am and 8am and only seem to trigger when the weather is foggy. Consuming these golden peyote plants will transform you into a Sasquatch. Obviously a psychedelic effect of the plant. You haven't actually become Bigfoot, you're just hallucinating that that's the case. But what I find to be most compelling is the sound effects that play when you approach one of these cacti. Before you even have a chance to consume it, you hear Bigfoot noises. And this is consistent across all Golden Peyote locations. The Bigfoot noises draw you to the plant. But since at that moment at least you're not actually high, does that imply that somewhere close by, a Sasquatch may be dwelling? It makes no sense to be able to hear these audio prompts before becoming high. It's obvious they are just intended to be audio prompts, but I'm the kind of tosser who likes to apply a meaning to everything. I don't apologise for that. It's also worth mentioning that in these peyote hallucinations we don't actually become Bigfoot, just rather the image Franklin associates with a Sasquatch, which is this guy in a costume. Which is odd because I'm not entirely sure these are even exclusive to Franklin, but I've only ever seen people complete this aspect as Franklin so I just played it safe. Now if you do the golden peyote plants in week placement order from Sunday through to the following Saturday, apparently provided you didn't pump this guy, which I did and I knew that would come back and bite me in the ass. I'm sorry, every time you transform into Bigfoot there will be the remains of either an animal or a human nearby to the player. Come the Saturday plant that body will be the remains of the Sasquatch Hunter and growling as Bigfoot will be met with an ever more menacing response. I didn't manage to get this right on my end, but it's an unmistakable growl that will lead you to various dead bodies throughout the map, and eventually you'll be led to Thompson's scrapyard near Sandy Shores where you will face the beast. A werewolf guy of some description that isn't really relevant to this video, but somebody would mention it if I didn't. But it is cool and fairly obscure to uncover. However, defeating the beast will unlock both the Sasquatch and Beast in direct mode, but in this encounter the beast does genuinely possess otherworldly abilities, but then again, Franklin's high as fuck. But what does intrigue me is, as you're moving through the world in a Bigfoot hallucination, otherwise benign NPCs will sometimes just grow hostile towards you and attack. I'm not sure I'd fancy my chances with a Sasquatch personally, but maybe they're not perceiving you as Bigfoot, but rather just as the player character. But why are they just randomly attacking? I have no clue. But if Bigfoot gets a motorbike out of the situation, who cares? But this sadly doesn't get us any closer to discerning where the real deal is. Is there a genuine Sasquatch out there in the Grand Theft Auto universe at all? Well, as far as single player is concerned, I've more or less covered that top to bottom, to a degree of adequacy that's not for me to discern. But perhaps there's something of value in Grand Theft Auto Online. There's this rather nifty Bigfoot tattoo, for example, and Bigfoot related hallucinations akin to those we see in the single player, but those don't really interest me. See, there's a seasonal event in GTA Online where you will be contacted by the Sasquatch Hunter, whose name appears to be Tanner, and his message will read, Hey, you a hunter? You better be, cause there's something in those woods, and it ain't a bear. Trust me, damn thing nearly killed me once. They'll say you're crazy till you get its hide, then you'll be laughing all the way to the bank and that will begin what's known as the Yeti Hunt, which appears to have been part of the Chop Shop update that released on the 12th of December last year. In this timed hunt, while San Andreas was snowy, players could investigate five clues in Rattan Canyon to hunt the Yeti. A dead deer, a wrecked car, a bloody tent, a bloodied shirt, and human body parts. And should you find all five of these clues and return to this area at night time, the Yeti will come for you. And it's basically just a white variant of the Bigfoot attire this guy was getting about in. However, it appears as if it's not clarified as to whether or not the Yeti is a man or a beast. However, completing the Yeti hunt unlocks the Yeti outfit and ambiguity is progress, right? So to conclude, it's unclear if there even is a Bigfoot out there in the wild somewhere in the Grand Theft Auto universe. In fact, the presence of any Sasquatch or Yeti content in Grand Theft Auto 5 
appears to be more gleefully mocking the player's desire for the Sasquatch to be present than the premise of an undetected eight foot tall ape man roaming in sustainable numbers in the forests around humans. But in doing so, if anything, they make the myth of Bigfoot in the Grand Theft Auto universe all the more compelling. As though the gratification of satisfying straightforward answers is almost certainly absent, this approach provides wiggle room for a story to be told. And I've enjoyed attempting to unravel it today. Who knows where Rockstar will go with the Bigfoot story in the future, if indeed they'll ever go anywhere with it. Or maybe they'll leave it be and just teeter around it like they do with the Yeti hunt in GTA Online most recently, allowing it to, for the most part, remain a myth. Regardless, this has been a fun video to make. I enjoy scratching my head like this and hopefully making you scratch yours a bit as well. This sort of thing occupies that sweet spot between things that are actually there that can be seen and things that require you to interpret. And in my opinion, that's where I operate best. Before I conclude this video, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to go ahead, leave a like. If you're new, maybe hit subscribe and share and all that wonderful stuff. I'd massively appreciate it, but you don't have to. However, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please take care and goodbye.